What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Average Joe Lawn Care Show. Uh, I'm your host, Ben, as you all know. Um, come on, screen, work with me here. Um, today I have, or this week, I have a very special guest with me. My co-host is Jake, the one and only lawn care kid. Um, yeah, I hope you guys had a great week. I had a good week. It was, uh, it seemed like each week keeps going by faster and faster as this year trucks on by, but, um, I hope you guys had a great week. Hope it was relaxing. And if not, I hope the show can at least bring you some relaxation, some laughs, some good times, and, uh, just a, a good way to enter your, uh, weekend and go from there. So Jake, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. How are well, you, Ben? Um, we had some snow this past week here in the St. Louis area. We had uh, probably it was it was around two inches, might be a little over, but it was wasn't anything super substantial. But I at least got out to enjoy a little bit of snow removal with the uh, Toro power shovel that they sent me. So um, that was a lot of fun. Fun. Did you guys get any snow up there? Oh yeah, we got about uh we actually got about four to six inches. So I went out and cleared some driveways myself. A little vlog coming on Sunday for those who want to right check on. it out. So you got to use all those uh snow blowers then that you got Well yeah, not all of them. I got so I got all dual stages and we didn't really get enough snow to justify using them because I got some big ones. I got some big ones we're gonna be doing videos on. So I took my little battery out and I I guess I could have taken the the bigger ones, but I don't know. The little one just seemed a little more practical. We didn't get as much as I thought. So did, uh, is it, how much snow do you guys typically get in your area, uh, for the winters? I mean, do you get like, like for us, we generally like the snowfall we get is a pretty average snowfall. Like we'll get, you know, two to three inches at one time. It's rare that we get like six inches or like a foot of snow all at once. It usually like it maybe accumulates over a couple of days in order to get that. But what's like an average snowfall for you guys? I'd say anywhere around four, four inches to a foot, and that includes snow drift. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a, a decent amount more than we would get at at one time. Do you? What's your guys' mm -hmm. like general? Do you guys get a ton of snow every every winter? We used to. We used to be known for our winters here in Indiana, but over the years, um, I don't know. It's just been odd because some years we get. A little bit of snow and then other years we get super mild winters where the lawns stay green so either way it's a double whammy it's a sure. positive how is your lawn looking right now is it staying green oh no it's dead <laughs> it's dead it's dormant went to sleep a long time ago yeah and here's something that's very interesting this is something i'm taking note of so my lawn is 15 years old i have sod up front in the side and then i got seed in the back um, what I've noticed was the survival of your se of your seeded lawn during the winter. Um, it definitely looks, be it definitely holds on a little bit more when you compare it to your sodded lawn, especially if you have your lawn sodded in an area where you have high competition, like I do with those damn Bradford pears that I always talk about. But uh, anyway, other than that, yeah, things are looking good. Looking forward to a solid green up in the spring. Hope everyone is too. Now, are you looking for? Are you? Is there any plans to chop those Bradford pears down? Oh, no, no. I love them and hate them. That's the thing. I, I hate them because I have to compete with them and I also have to, um, you, you know, feed them so they're not competing too much. But I love them because they also provide a little bit of shade to the majority of the lawn. But uh, yeah, other than that, it's a love hate relationship. Because I know I don't, I've never cared for them because they, every lawn that I've, yeah, no they, every lawn I've had them in, they've always, <laughs> they always have a super shallow root system. And the root system that isn't that is shallow is like these real big girthy fat roots that you can't really cut because I mean I don't know maybe you could and it wouldn't hurt the tree but um, <laughs> you're just most likely going to have another one pop up somewhere else even if you do cut and remove uh, remove that one and they're always super top heavy like you can have these massive uh -huh. limbs that like they started like maybe three or four feet from the ba from the ground so because they don't have a really long trunk before they start branching out so they 
I think that's one reason why they always have Absolutely. a tendency to split when you have a like a big windstorm or uh, you know a thunderstorm or something like that where there's heavy winds. They're just going to split with with no problem at all. Absolutely, I could agree with you on that. And like like you were saying, one of the biggest things with the root systems of Bradford pears is, unlike most trees, they don't really reflect the top growth. They they just grow yeah. out wide, very shallow and very wide. And because of that, they will compete with your turf if you have a lot of yeah. turf nearby. So uh, when you went out and cleared cleared some snow uh, the last couple of days, does your dad come out and help you or? Because I know I've seen some pictures of like or in videos where your dad's come out and helped the silverback. That is, if you guys, <laughs> I'm sure anybody back, in the right. chat knows uh, Jake's dad, the silverback. Um, there's a good story <laughs> behind that. Um, but I know I've seen in videos him coming out and helping you do like some uh, like help help cut some properties and stuff like that. Does he do any snow removal with you? Yeah, you know it. It's not a full time thing like my dad helping me. It's not it's not like we do it all the time, but there are times where it's like, hey, dad, you know, if if you could help me film so I could film a video, that'd be great. You know how everyone feels about the old silverback. <laughs> and all in all, if I ever if I ever need him for help, he'll you know, he's down to come help me out anytime he's not working. Um, he's he works uh, for the company Eagle Lab, you know, the pest um, mm -hmm. pest control company. So we, he's on the he's on the phone all day, meetings and all that. So when he gets a minute away from that and he wants to come work, he he's almost down to do it all the time. So, you know, very involved dad. Not not like too involved. He's like right in the middle. So he's a good dad. He's uh, I actually got I, it was awesome to finally meet both you and your dad. This uh, well, not this past year is in 2019 at the GIE. That was a lot yeah. of fun to finally time. Flies. What's that? I yeah, said that's, time flies. that's absolutely true. <laughs> um, well, before we get going any further, I just wanted to kind of give people some shout outs, say hello to everybody that, that is in the chat and watching right now. I do appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, looks like we got Pacific Northwest Lawns, uh, Brandon Hayden, Super TA. Thank you for joining in, bud. Lazy Lawns, uh, the Lawn Analyst, Lawn Journeys on... On the lawn training, A's lawn and landscaping. What's going on, Aiden? Uh, <laughs> Aiden, what's growing up, with Greg, left tool, Papa Mo's lawn, Mo's low, um, and Andy's lawn care and outdoor adventures. Thanks for tuning in, uh, Jonathan Surgent. I believe I pronounced that. If I didn't, I apologize. Dad, who mows best? Thank you for tuning in all the way down in Austin, Texas. Uh, backyard all day. And it looks like I've caught up to everybody, but I appreciate everybody tuning in. I keep the show pretty light. It's uh, not really necessarily a Q&A uh, show. It's not a interview style. It's more of all of us just hanging out together, including you all in the chat, just hanging out, um, talking lawn care and not sometimes our, our talk may go off topic and it's not on lawn care. It's just things that may be related or whatever. So Hope you guys enjoy this one. Um, if you have any questions or topics you want us to talk about, feel free to throw that down in the chat. Uh, what's going on, Justin? And uh, we'll hopefully get to it. Uh, uh, Jake is a good... He's got a lot of knowledge, so we may we may be uh, taking advantage of that knowledge and ha having him answer some of your questions that I would most likely not be able to answer because he has a lot more knowledge and experience than I do. So... Um, yeah, it's good to have somebody on the show again that has a plethora of knowledge for all of us DIYers. Um, Mark, what's going on, buddy? Out in, uh, do you know where Mark, Mark's up in Chicago, isn't he? He's in, he's in uh, the lawn, the lawn creeps guy. You know who I'm talking about, Jake? Yeah, I know exactly who you're talking about. I yeah, love that. Dude. I think. Uh, well, he's actually going to be on the show next weekend, so that's that's exciting. So if uh, if any of you guys. Want to pop in next week? We got him on as well, so that's going to be a great show. So yeah, uh, Jake, how do you? You know, you were. I don't know if you knew this, but you were one of the original, the original lawn care YouTubers that I started following, along with Alan, of course. And um, you know, I don't know if you know this, but you do. You do inspire a lot of people to, you know start their own lawn care YouTube channel or whatever it may be, just join the lawn care community in some form or fashion, whether it be on YouTube or Instagram or Twitter, 
you know, I just want you to know that you, uh, even though you might be a, a younger person than me, but you still inspired me to do something that I otherwise may not have done. Um, so just wanted you to know that you, you inspire the young, old and same age as you, I guess. I appreciate that, Ben. Thank you for the kind you, words. Uh, I just, I, I greatly appreciate the drive you, you have, you and Aiden have, uh, drive that I, I don't generally see in kids your age. And I think that's just, uh, really something to, um, you know, to give kudos to you guys for us. And I, you know, I think you guys are doing great things, not only for the lawn care industry, but you know, I think you're doing good things for your generation as well. I think you're going to inspire more kids, your generation and younger generations to do some cool things. So keep up the great work. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, let's jump into somebody's got a quick question. Growing with Greg said question on overseeding with KBG planted midnight cultivar in a pot mixed with tall, turf type tall fescue and it germinated in seven days. Right. Any other cultivars you know that germinate as quick? For me. I don't, so here's the thing. I don't really pay attention more to cultivars when I teach. It's more so just Kentucky bluegrass as a whole. Yes, I'm aware there are some um, varieties out there of Kentucky bluegrass that can germinate fast, midnight being a great example of that. But what I would say to you is if you're a beginner, I wouldn't pay attention to a particular blend, but I'd more so maybe go to your boutique seed shop or a place like GCI Turf um, because there you'll be able to find great knowledgeable people who know what they're talking about, who actually s specialize in selling seed, and they'll be able to point you in the right direction of the cultivar you want for your situation, and on top of that, possibly getting some KBG in there that can germinate fast, because believe it or not, every grass type is different, they all have their strengths, they all have their weaknesses, so that's something that um, I would look into um, with the, one of those two scenarios. If you do that, you'll be and good. Your lawn is your lawn all KBG, or do you have any tall fescue in there? So my lawn is all KBG. Probably a couple of different varieties. I'm not sure. I was like a little tyke when it was all planted, but next to it, next door, um, Alan's old lawn. That's all fescue, okay. with a little bit of KBG in the sides okay. and back. <clears throat> so uh, I feel like there's a lot of uh a lot of backstory to yours and or and alan's story like your guys's relationship when you guys were living together you know when you were a little kid uh and watching him make youtube videos and then him encouraging you to you know get in your videos <laughs> or his videos and then start your own stuff like before any of that started uh the youtube stuff for you and maybe even before you realized he was making videos, like what was that like for you? Did you, were you already into lawn care prior to that? Or was that kind of your, you were like curious and you got involved that way? Oh yeah. I was into lawn care for the longest time. As a matter of fact, when I was little, I used to follow my dad around when he would cut the lawn. And on top of that, um, I was so obsessed with it that my mom actually had to buy me like a little, one of those mini Home Depot mowers that you see all the kids in the Facebook groups pushing around. So I was in love with it to begin with. And as I got older, like going into third grade, I don't know if you, I don't know if I've told anybody this, but I have Asperger's, right? And on top of that, I also, I also have a little so social sure. anxiety, right? And I've had that, it's not as bad as it used to be, but when I was a kid, it was to the point where I just couldn't fit in with anybody. And I was very, very stressed out and I didn't have an outlet until I realized that I was able to start mowing lawns, right? So I started using that as a way to um, minimize my stress a little bit, just exert some energy and all that. And it turned into a true passion as I got older. And here I am today teaching it. I love it. I love everything about it. That's kind of, so I, I did know you have, I, I did know you have Asperger's. Like, did that, was that a challenge to get over, like to, or to work through? Or did, did making videos and talking to a camera kind of help you uh, with all of that. Oh, no, I had the talking part down. The, the biggest thing I, I did though, when I was young is I, I, I could easily make myself, I would, I wouldn't say I was a fool, but to most kids, I, I would make myself look like a <laughs> fool. Right. So I was always like that, that clown who went a little too far, 
growing up. But as I got older, you know, I had the talking part down. It was just a, it was just a matter of finding community that I could, you know, talk to and connect with. So I pretty much had the talking part down. It was just looking for someone to connect with and doing, doing this has definitely open that aspect up and I couldn't be more happy about it. <clears throat> and so, uh, I'm assuming like, you know, the social anxiety stuff, like, I mean, talking to a camera and really putting yourself out there on social media, the way you do it, it, it's had to have break a lot of barriers for you to really improve that aspect of things. Right. Oh yeah, totally. But the biggest thing with me is I wouldn't say the social anxiety thing with me is small okay. talk. Other than that, I'm like, I could teach, I could get up on stage and talk for 10 minutes. But when it comes to, when it came to talking to people, that's where I, I struggled. You. But obviously with doing this and having an outlet and actually interacting with people, it made it easier. I got you. That makes sense. Well, I got another com uh, question coming at you from uh, Keep Off The Grass Livecast. Actually, that's a new uh, lawn care livecast podcast uh, show that's online. It involves a lot of the new... Um, newer lawn care youtubers diyers that they they do a show i know they've been i think they've done two or three shows you guys should go check them out um but jake they got a question for you he said are you planning on going into the lawn care business full-time someday okay so just to give you an idea of what i'm doing now so i make youtube videos and i actually have my own store that i'm going to be launching very soon more information on that um, so the idea being is, oh, I forgot to mention, I also have my own lawn care business in the neighborhood that I've built up to almost 20 clients now. So the goal of what I want to do is I want to grow both the YouTube channel and the business. And I eventually want to get to a point where I can diversify and go mainly into applying fertilizer, liquid fertilizer to lawns. Um, and then maybe eventually, I don't know, we'll see where we're at, possibly do YouTube full time or go more into the business. I don't know. But either way, I love doing both of them. Well, I, I do think um, it's very interesting because you have a uh, unique editing skill with your videos. And I think I think you could <laughs> almost have a career for some sort of lawn business merely doing that kind of stuff as, you know, marketing or something like that. Like I, And I know you've learned a lot of marketing stuff and, and that style of things with your relationship with, with Alan um, because that's one thing I watch, like, I'm like, man, this, you know, Jake's really good at lawn care and his knowledge, but he's really good at making content and, uh, and creating videos as well, which is almost like you could, you could use that in a very broad range of things. Like it doesn't necessarily have to oh, be absolutely. lawn care. No, absolutely. As a matter of fact, um, my buddy Aiden out there, him and I, we, we jam all the time on the phone. Like we talk about different editing techniques that we want to try out. And on top of that, I even helped him edit a commercial for one of our good friends here in the lawn care industry. Um, any of you guys out there, um, some of you guys might be familiar with him. Some of you might not. Nick Carlson of Mulchmate. Um, he makes this big tank that holds and dispenses mulch off your truck. It's supposed to save you time. It's a really awesome tool. So Aiden and I um, decided to tag team that. He filmed it, and him and I were jamming on the phone for a couple of weeks, getting that edited, and we got that out around after Christmas. So, yeah, it really is a fun. It really is fun to have all those different skill sets because you can diversify and just do a bunch of different mm -hmm. things with it. So, yeah. Well, we have some new faces in here that's uh, that have popped in. Uh, George from Princess Cut Lawns or Princess Cut Lawn Care. Thanks for tuning in, Scott O'Hare. Uh, I thought there was one other one. Uh, oh, elevated lawnscapes. That's right. What's going on? Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Um, so, you know, uh, what, what are some of the things that you generally do over the winter to, you know, keep yourself occupied? I know because, you know, like we, as you know, like you and I, I think have had a very similar winter as far as very little precipitation, uh, unusually yeah. warm, um, and obviously the grass isn't growing, so there's not a whole lot we can do out there. What have you been doing to keep yourself busy and to keep you uh, from going nuts, from being inside? Okay, I'm glad you asked this question because I actually made a video about this called Make the Most Out of Every Day, M-O-W-S-T. I made this like two, it's a little short film. Um, one of the things I talked about in there 
was how I actually get through the winter. So basically all I do is I keep busy with the things I love doing, right? Like one thing I've started doing uh, recently in the last couple of years, as you could tell, a couple of things, uh, photo and video aspect. I've, I've tried to double down on my editing, uh, my delivery, my production. You can see I got a little set now that I film in. And then on top of that, like my Instagram portfolio as a whole, that's like a, it's an art gallery now. So one of the things that kind of challenges me and keeps me through, keeps me going through the winter is that because essentially what I try to do with my Instagram account um, is I try to I try to emulate a fond favorite out there by the name of Peter mm -hmm. McKinnon. Um, what, one of the things he prefaces with Instagram is using it like your portfolio. And this is actually what I tell a lot of people who start their own businesses, no matter how young or old they are, use it like your portfolio, right? Not only taking quality pictures, but matching the tones from picture to picture to keep them cohesive and looking good together and, you know, like color coordinating, matching, transitioning from season to season. There's so much that goes into it. It's a good like mental challenge, definitely to keep you going. It's Something I thoroughly enjoy because I love photo video. Here, let me turn that back on. There we go. Because I love photo video. And on top of that, another thing I do is when we get snowstorms, right, I just I just double down on, you know, reviewing snowblowers and doing snowblower content. So, yeah. So I would say you probably have a very unique um, – you and Aiden have a very unique <laughs> like path as to where you're going after high school. Um, Aiden's still in high school, correct? Yeah, yeah I'm you not. graduated last year, right? Or yeah, last yep. year, 2020. Um, so uh, you guys have a very unique path than I think most kids do after high school, as far as a lot of kids, you know, going off to college or something like that. And I think I think I've heard you say you're taking some. Uh, some college courses as far as like turf management stuff. Is that correct? I was, here's the thing. I was going to do turf management, but the main campus is actually an hour to two hours away from my house. And I'm not willing to leave everything I'm doing behind because I actually enjoy it. So one of the biggest things that my dad and I agreed on is that I would take business courses at a community college. And I figured that would be better than going away to some university um, which I'm not bashing any university. I think they're great and the things they teach there are awesome, but um, I'd, I'd rather stay local, keep growing my business, keep growing my YouTube channel, and definitely keep growing with you guys because I, I enjoy this. I love I love being able to turn the camera on every week it's in, my own, in my own house and just being able to talk to all of you and teach you guys stuff. It's yeah, fun. well, that's kind of what I, what, uh, like what you were just saying in the conversation you had with your dad, uh, like... You know, you doing like those, you know, just a couple like those business courses at a community college, I'd still say your your broad yep. spectrum of what you're doing out of high school is very much different than what most people are doing your age getting out of out of high school. So how does that like, you know, what does your dad think of that? And like, does is, has he been really encouraging? Like, is you know, because it's it's probably starkly different than what he imagined you would be doing going out of high, high school, he probably, you know, maybe thought you were going to go to college or something like that. I don't know. I'd... Oh, oh yeah. You know, when I was, before this whole thing started, we talked about it. Like I was pro I was definitely aiming to go to like a top school because it was just some, it was pretty much the only thing that was occupying my time. But then when this started and I found out that I really liked doing it, he was on board with it. He was like, Jake, <laughs> he was like, Jake, you, you do what makes you happy. All I ask is that you obviously, you know, take a couple of courses, educate yourself, get your education, um, have a little bit of balance between that and this, because it's good to have a safety net in case something does go south. Cause you sure. never know. Like this past, this past year has been nothing but uncertainty. I'm yep. sure we could all agree on yep. that. Well, that's pretty cool. I've always been one. I've always been, excuse me, kind of been curious about that. Just from a perspective, uh, from that perspective, I'm sure after meeting your dad just once, I know he has, I can tell he has a lot of respect for just what you do. And he knows that you got your head on straight and you're trying to do, you know, you're not just goofing yeah. around. You're actually, you know, you're working towards something. So I could definitely see how your dad or any parent may be like, well, you know, he's got, you know, he's got his head on straight. He's, he's, he's working towards something and I'm not about to, maybe try to derail that, but it does sound like he is, you know, like you said, he's like, well, I want you to do this just to kind of keep yourself, 
you know, some uh, diver diversified, right. as you would yeah. say. So A exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's uh, he's very he's very understanding, very supportive. He has been my entire life, actually. Re really good dad. Seriously. Any anytime I need him, he's there. He he's got my back, and that's that's probably the best thing you could you could have in a father. Well, I know everybody may know of Jake's uh, lawn fire shows that he would. Are you still doing those, by the mm. way? Or yeah, so about that, I I stopped doing them for a little while, mainly because I was doubling down on the production value sure. of my videos. And it, it, it honestly, I think it just got to a point for me, too, where a, a lot of you guys, it's very interesting because I, I streamed early on Friday nights. And what I realized over time is it was becoming the same thing. It was becoming repetitive, like re week after week after week, every Friday night, 6 to 7 p.m. And I understand there's better things that most people would rather be doing on a Friday from 6 to 7. So I think I am. I think. I definitely want to start it back up, but I want to balance it out a little bit more. Maybe not doing it weekly, but doing it maybe a couple of times a month on like a Thursday night or something. I'm still trying to find that perfect sure. night to do it. Well, I was going to say that uh, when you did that show, one of the most memorable shows for me, um, it was one of the ones when Connor <laughs> was on in the chat and your sisters kept interrupting you. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly uh, what you're talking that about. That was easily one of the most memorable shows that you did. Uh, it reminded me just of the sibling life. You know, I didn't have any sisters. I had two older brothers. And you're the mm -hmm. oldest of three siblings, right? Or Yeah, yeah, yeah so, there's three of us. You know, I, it, when I saw that episode and saw that... Two girls, too, man. Oh, oh, that, that's right. You're the only boy. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, I, I know I know it's so rough for everyone that has younger brothers, but let me tell you, younger sisters are brutal. <laughs> <laughs> you could do you could do everything in the world for them and they don't appreciate you. Well, so I'm. <laughs> but that's all. It's all good. Fun. You're I'm the oldest of three and I'm the youngest of three so we're on the we're on the the opposite spectrum of things in regards to you know being the oldest and youngest but mm -hmm. yeah what you're saying though I'm sure to some degree my oldest brother my oldest brother is, would probably say when when we were growing up some of the same things you would with having uh two younger sisters so <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I just wanted to mention that because that was I loved that when that happened, I was like, man, this is just so raw and real. And it reminds me so much of my own childhood growing up and with two older brothers. That's funny. Listen, I love them to death, but sometimes I want to murder them. <laughs> <laughs> That's how much they annoy me. Um, Michael. Don't take that no, the wrong no, way, no, guys. You're having fun. Uh, Michael Lakeda. Uh, he asked, how much did you learn from Alan? Oh, I've learned. A, so here's the thing. Having my dad and Alan in my life as I was growing up was very, very interesting because my dad, as I mentioned earlier, he he's worked his way up in the pest industry, whereas Alan's worked his way up in the lawn industry. So they both, you know, had to go to had to get similar licenses and all that type of stuff. Right. So very similar knowledge different spectrums of this of the same knowledge from both of them so I, I learned a wide variety of things from you know just talking to both of them together because one of the things that that I would I would see when I would talk to both of them is Alan would teach me a lot about the lawn basics um, right because from watching his videos and just jamming with him as neighbors as I was growing up um, he, he's even the one who pushed me to start a business too so Alan if you're watching this thank you and the channel as well uh, and my dad was more on the pest side. So if I wanted to double down on pest control, maybe do a video with the silverback um, talking about pest control, that that would definitely be something I'd be down to do because he's he's a wealth of knowledge with that stuff. So, yeah, there's that. Um, the Longineer, he asked, what's uh, what's going on? Joining late. I, I think you did talk about this, but uh, you can mention it again. Uh, he said, what are your business plans, Jake? Grow the business, get in, get more into mainly fertilization in my business, and get to a point where I can rely on YouTube as a career and possibly do both. Okay. And you said you wanted to kind of maybe uh, go solely into spraying as a, as an applicator. Yes. 
Okay. Yes. Uh, George from Princess Cut Lawn Care, he asked, Jake, what's it like being... What was it like... No, I'm sorry. Jake, what's it like to be YouTube famous in high school? I bet you got all the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Not for the first couple of years, but going out of high school, it was rough. They were all after me. <laughs> was it... Uh, did, did you get a lot of... Did some, like, what was it, what was that like? Because that's an honest question. Like, did you get a lot of, like, people, like, bullies because of that? Like, people think, like, oh, this kid thinks he's he's hot stuff uh, just because he oh, makes yeah. YouTube videos or something like that. Oh, no, no, you know, I was, I wouldn't consider myself a hot shot at all. No one considered me a hot shot. I was more of an outcast growing up. I told you that. It was just due to my social uh, things. So, anyway, as as I got older and the channel grew those same people started started to realize, wow, <laughs> we made fun of that kid. Look at him. He's making more money than I am, and he's having fun yeah. doing it. That's pretty funny. Yeah. Well, I know, like, for me growing up, you know, I, I wasn't, I didn't, uh, I could, I would just, like, grow, going up through high school, I could imagine if I had something like that, you know, like what you have going on, I could imagine people thinking, you know, maybe uh being more maybe jealous and or uh and then that jealousy turns into just bitterness and being rude but i could also see a majority of people like your friends and just a majority of people being more positive towards you and uh being encouraging cuz i think more more time than not that's in our lives than the actual negative things so I will say one thing I've learned from it, right? Because with those same people who have said some things, a lot of them were playful, some were not. I I actually laugh at it. I actually laugh with those people about those um, trolls from back then. You know, we all do because we all have those kids that we were, you know, we kind of had a little beef with, right? But as we got older, matured a little bit, realized we were best friends. As a matter of fact, I actually got to a point, I had this one kid that was very well liked in school, this one, one fellow dude that everyone everyone just loved. He, you know, like number one on the basketball team, all of that. Him and I became friends around sophomore year, and he actually worked for me a year in business. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so so the way I would look at it, um, all my young friends out there who do get trolled or bullied by kids in school, I ju just learn to forgive because as you guys get older, you got to remember, some kids are nice, some are, you know, total jerks, but as you grow up and mature, some of them, um, you know, won't change at all, but others will sometimes regret what they've said or done to you and they might want to help you and become a little loyal to you so it's good to keep those people in mind and just be a forgiving person right give people a second chance that's good advice i think we could all take including myself uh we could all take during these times i think sometimes mm -hmm. we just need to absolutely to, uh forgive people and and uh see the better and more positive things in everyone so um, Emilio from upstate New or yeah, Emilio Cabal Caballero. I'm butchered that up New York lawn. Uh, he <laughs> said, Hey guys, happy Friday, Jake. I'll be copying your smart hose over the lawn, over the ground irrigation system this spring. Thanks for the idea. You're welcome. That was a lot of fun to do. So for those who don't know what he's talking about, let me tell you what I did. So this, this has been an idea of mine forever. Even Alan will tell you. Um, I know there's tons of videos online about making like DIY irrigation systems, but most of them are done with like PC pipes above ground with sprinkler heads and all that, but not, not me. I wanted to do it with like regular heads that you could buy at the store above ground heads and above ground timers and all that stuff. Alan will tell you, I pretty much had like an elaborate plan of his lawn drawled out with sprinkler heads in every, cr every corner and cranny obviously never happened, but <laughs> I, I was very fascinated by the whole idea of irrigation growing up. So um, it, it's something, yeah, again, it's something I loved, I loved. So I decided to make a video about it, go to Home Depot, see what I could find and went from there the materials turned out great. And here we are. I can't remember if you're, is your system similar to how, uh, Ryan Nord did his, or is it, is yours more like buried in the ground and you, cause you have those sec, you have those sprinklers set in one spot. Okay. So we're talking pre quick snap because I have sprinkler heads now that pop out of the ground, but that's a whole nother oh, story. Okay. Cause before that I made a video before that, I made a video that got a little more attention. Now North system is cool because he actually uses sprinkler system heads, right? Me, I use 
those like orbit auth I used to use those orbit oscillators that you could find at Home Depot for like 10 bucks. I got those, got some hoses, got one of those orbit four port timers. I'm not sponsored by orbit for those who think I am because I, I do work with a couple of companies. I'm not. I, it's just one of the most found products you could find and they happen to be really good. So yeah, it's just a four port hose timer that connects to your spigot, four hoses that run out and four sprinkler heads to cover the entire oh, front right yard. On. Cause I know, I, I know I've watched some of your, I know I watched one of your DIY, uh, sprinkler system videos. I just, I can't remember which one I have and have not seen. <clears throat> and I've done a few, uh, Andy's lawn care and outdoor adventure. He asked Jake, do you ever plan on getting a stand on mower in the near future? Yes. Yes, I do. I don't, I don't plan on buying one right away because I'm actually very happy with the zero turns I've gotten, but I'm actually, this is interesting. I'm waiting to see if, um, if maybe we can get a collaboration going where I get a mower to try out on the channel. But in the meantime, uh, it's all zero turns for which, me. Which, which so stand on would you want to, uh, try out? Mm, that's a tough one. I'm not, I'm not a big expert on stand-ons. A right, a right ZK would probably be up there. Love the right ZKs. From what I see, they're very fast. They're very wide. They're very well built. Pete from GCI Turf, he he loves those. Skag V Ride definitely would love to give that a shot. And heck, maybe even a Toro Grandstand because who doesn't sure, love Toro? Sure. Yeah, I tried one of those. Uh, one of the uh, right mowers. Uh, just the right when you can ride it around at the GIE this last year, and that was the first time I've ever uh -huh. ridden. A stand on mower and that was that was a uh that was an experience one that i that's extremely responsive more responsive than i thought it would be as far as like mm. like you just barely tap one of the controls and it's going to turn you left or right um that's but right. i could totally <laughs> see i can see how people like zip through lawns super fast with those things and make their productivity that much faster oh no yeah. they're great and this actually brings me to something that my buddy Brian over at Brian's Lawn Maintenance, this, he's more of a professional geared YouTuber. He does a little bit of DIY stuff, but mostly pro. He's the guy who tries out pretty much everything, and he's got a massive following to back it. So he, he brought up a common debate that I thought was pretty cool. So it's like, hey, if you're going to a yard and you have to get off your mower every five seconds, then you probably shouldn't be using the zero turn. Maybe a stand on. Otherwise, you could pass with the zero turn just fine. But one of the things I've also found with zero turns, this is kind of funny. I don't know if you guys can relate to this, but all my DIY friends out there, or maybe even lawn kids who have gates in their backyards, one of the biggest things for me is if you like the side discharge, you have to get off, you have to either A, get off the mower or use your foot. Obviously, after you turn the blade off, make sure you're safe. You have to like take your foot and pull up the flap so you can fit the 42 inch deck into the 42 inch gate. Otherwise, bam, shoot breaks off. No good. Right. And no you're, you're, are you talking you're talking about on a zero turn, right? Not a stand on. Yeah. So on a, I'm talking about any like whether it's a zero turn or stand on. If you're using like the, the factory oh, side okay. discharge. They have a flap, a safety flap that comes down. And if you leave it down, most gates it I won't gotcha. fit through. So that's the only thing. With a stand on, that might be a little easier. Well, uh, I'm going to jump into the segment that we've been doing for a while now. <laughs> uh, I meant to start it right after we were talking about the bullies in high school. because That, that would have been a good segue. But we're going to jump into the segment called oh, okay. Keyboard Warriors. This is... This is a uh, segment dedicated to talking about some of the trollers that we all get as lawn care YouTubers or anybody in lawn creating lawn our YouTube content. You're <laughs> going to get trollers of some kind. Jake had some interesting ones, and I'm actually kind of curious about like how old some of these people are that are are trolling on a kid in mm -hmm. high school. Like how how mature do you have to be to do that? <laughs> but anyway, yeah. here's the first one. Before you read them, can I can I give a little yes. context? So all of these comments, by the way, are from one particular video that I made about five years ago now on the YouTube channel. It's called Real Mower versus Rotary Mower. And if you look on my YouTube channel at all, this is the most popular video I've ever made. It's got a million views on it. However, it's also the worst video I've ever made. <laughs> Keep in mind, I made it. Oh, man. I made it at the worst part in my... I made, I made it at like the cringiest phase of my YouTube career, right? Like I was doing 
oh man, I just, I couldn't talk to a camera. I mean, I, I guess I could, but I was, I was a little silly in that video. And it was also around the time when real mowing became popular. I think Connor, um, Connor Ward before his channel became what it is today. And he started making videos. I think he even commented on that video four years ago to shed a little bit of light on some of the things I said in there, because what I said in that video, um, was entirely, you know, accurate about like real versus rotary, but there were some things that were not addressed in that video. Like the fact that you can get a, uh, gas or electric powered rotary mowers. Cause I, real mowers because i didn't even know that was a thing until 2018 when everyone started yeah. talking about it right you know i'm 14 year old kid what do i know right i was just a silly kid making silly <laughs> videos didn't really think much about it so to any of you who've seen that video i just want to say i'm sorry for wasting your time and if you decided to subscribe i appreciate you because i am much more polished and professional <laughs> and structured than i ever was in that video it was so bad but some people found it funny and Got a lot of positive feedback off it, so it was cool. Anyway, Ben, go ahead and right. read them off. Well, to your point, though, I've watched that video, and I have to be honest. If I, When I was that age, first of all, I never <laughs> would have stood in front of a camera to even attempt to make a video, <laughs> and I definitely wouldn't have posted it on YouTube. So I give you huge props at that age to create content and do what you were doing because you were a kid. like You were doing what... What you wanted to do. You were yeah, having I was, fun. I was a silly kid, man. Just having fun. Uh, right. So here's the first one. This kid is probably excited when he looks outside and the grass is too tall. He And then someone right. commented to that comment saying, he is a nerd. That's right. I am a nerd. I'm a lawn nerd. I think, we, I th I would, I think everyone in here watching on the show and in the chat is a, is a nerd. I mean, that's just part of it, so... Um, the next one, I'm almost 40 years old. Never knew there was a debate between real versus rotary since no one in their right <laughs> mind is going to struggle with the pain in the ass a real push mower <laughs> offers. I'm pretty sure it's been decided. I read this one. I'm like, these are the people that don't have any idea like how far <laughs> like real mowers have come and they don't know like the actual process of actually real mowing. Because I'm not saying like manual real mowers are are easy to use compared to a gas, yeah. but if you're using it properly, it's really not that much of a pain in the butt. Um, that's what made me think of that. Just somebody, and again, a 40 year old dude dogging on a 14 year old. <laughs> <laughs> I've been called worse by better. <laughs> Keep going. Um. The last one I picked, he gave me a plethora of them, but I just took three of them. He had plenty of them. Uh, we can keep talking about it, too, after this one. The last one's pretty short. <laughs> just loser. Like, really? You're going to call go on to a 14-year-old a kid's video that's just trying to have fun and just call him a video or call him a loser? Plot twist. Loser became the winner. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Well, uh, I didn't pick. There were some of your comments that I was like, "Man," because I I sent you a message. I was like, <laughs> "People are just savages." Like, uh, <laughs> like one kid was like, "Oh, this kid probably gets bullied because he wears uh, sunglasses that are uh, that get tinted <laughs> or whatever." Yeah, it's I was tinted, like, right. "Goodness!" Like that's like a, that kid probably was the one calling people four eyes in high school and stuff like that. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, good good on him, man. I bet he I hope he's doing yeah. well. And you know what wherever you are, man, I'm sure you need a hug. I'm I'm all here for you. Well, uh the other thing I, I wanted to I, I've been including with in this, um, because uh I had a, a person that reached that was a, a supporter of mine since the beginning and he said I you know, I challenge you to to talk about the positive things and more uh, the positive comments you get and, and those types of things. And I brought that up with my last show with Matt Martin. And I'm going to bring it up to you, Jake. Is there anything that you can recall since starting your channel that, like, you know, when you get positive comments, you're like, man, that... Because I know I get more positive comments than, than negative. And I'm sure you do. Mm -hmm. um, is there some that stick out to oh, you yeah. that are just, you know... Like, man, that really just motivates me... 
uh, and it, it makes me want to keep going and, and, you know, continuing to show my thank you for my audience. Well, here's the thing with me. I don't like to play favorites, right? I just think the fact that you guys are out there and you see the value that I'm trying to bring you guys, that's just awesome and I appreciate it, right? Because at the end of the day, I never really sought out to build an audience. I started this just because I thought it was fascinating and fun to be able to teach people things. And it was something that I wanted to challenge myself to get better at. And the fact that you guys are out there writing all the positive comments and on top of that, even teaching me a thing or two, because that's what this is about, right? I don't know everything because one of the biggest problems with our generation or my generation, I should say, is that people like to call us entitled know-it-alls, right? And I want to change that because I'm not a know-it-all by any nature. I'll tell you in a video. If I don't know crap about something, I'll tell you that. So the fact that you guys uh, teach me a thing or two in the comments as I learn and continue to grow my reach, that's, that's beyond awesome. And I appreciate your continued support to this day, even years ago. So to all of you guys... Who have been watching i thank you well and and to your point like for me as well like that's you know i didn't i didn't start my channel in the hopes to get this huge gathering or audience or i never intended to ever turn it into a business or anything like that it was i i was just having fun and i still have fun and that's why i started this thing uh that's because right. it you know it's fun i i don't necessarily have anything to teach people i just learned a lot of things from people like you and Alan and Matt and John and, and many other people that are, have much more knowledge and experience than I do. And, and I've just learned just from, uh, you know, my own experiences and mistakes. Uh, and I also just wanted to make this stuff too, because it's been a huge outlet for me, uh, in, in stressful times in my life and those types of things. And, and that's what I think a lot of the lawn care community is for a lot of people is just a, a big outlet and stress reliever. Um, so what you said is kind of encouraging as well just now about like, you know, you created it because it's fun and I'm glad you're still having fun. It's not something right. that you don't have fun doing anymore. Absolutely. So, um, well, uh, what's what do you have going on this coming year any uh any big big plans uh anything exciting or that you can share well i can't tell you guys one thing um i i am working with our good friends over at echo as you guys know they have a new program called the user advisory group so i'll be making content over there hopefully um, shedding a little bit of light on stuff other than just equipment, maybe even doing a little lawn rehab on a hill. I'm sure, Ben, you, you're very fond of that. <laughs> so maybe you and I could do some one-on-one uh, -on, -one on that. Uh, but uh, other than that, guys, all I can say is, for the most part, I don't know what's going to happen next, and that's the best part about this job is not knowing See, what's was, next. Uh, what were you saying about a hill? So I have, so where I live, we live to the back huh. of our neighborhood. So behind us is just a big cornfield. And, and in between that, there's an easement that slopes about 45 degrees. I don't know if I'm going to do anything with it because it's pretty much a dumping ground for my business. Like if I go do a cleanup, I'll dump it at the bottom. But uh, yeah, I am thinking about getting, I am going to get some tools. We're going to, from Echo, we're going to chop some stuff down back there. It's going to be good, fun, cool footage. But uh I don't know if I'm going to do anything going further. Maybe I'll talk to you on that. Um, yeah, I would love to do. I've never done a collab with you. I, I mean, there's there's a lot of people I haven't done collabs with, but uh, I think it'd be really fun to do a collaboration video of some kind with you at some point in the future. Um, there are a lot of people I want to do collab videos with. I just haven't, obviously, this year or last year posed a, a big you know challenge to all that. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, I would be happy to help you, uh, with any sort of, uh, task or, or, or knowledge or anything I can help with on a hill. I had plenty of hills experience at the old house. That was the worst. <laughs> yeah. Didn't you have to wear cleats to mow that? Yeah. So <laughs> when we first moved into that house, I was just using regular shoes and whatnot. Uh, and realizing it was <laughs> it was a struggle. I would it was dangerous to wear just normal shoes because without a doubt you would slip no matter how 
dry the grass yeah. or the ground was, it was it would you know you'd slip and fall or whatever, <laughs> and you're you know using a mower and whatnot. So then I was like, well, why don't I just try my baseball cleats? And that that was a game changer. <laughs> and that was one of my videos that I made. It it was a terrible video, and it actually I think it gets. It gets a lot of views, but it, it nobody likes it. It has a ton of thumbs downs. Um, but I I started using baseball cleats because I was like, this is a huge game changer and it's a simple thing that I don't think a lot of people would necessarily think of using if they had a similar situation. Because obviously my situation was like an extreme, but I think it could work and be helpful for you know any degree of slope to mow on. Um, especially when you're, you're mm -hmm. using a walk behind mower. So absolutely. I've been there, um, with, I've been there with a couple of mowers that have faulted me with, uh, trans transmission problems and on a hill, it is not fun. <laughs> not fun. Um, so you've been doing a lot of stuff with the green County fertilizer. Uh, and I really, mm -hmm. Like that's another thing I want to give you huge props for for uh, making content for the next DIY channel because I think you have done an excellent job of uh, you know filling that role. Um, so, do you have any future plans for 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 working with them uh, that you could share with us? Yeah. So, for those who don't know. Um, I'm an ambassador for Green County Fertilizer. I have been for the last year, and I'm going into year number two of that. So one of the things that I try to do on the channel, because we have awesome people here like Ben who demonstrate the usability of the products in their lawns, I try to go for more of a teaching approach. Like, for instance, I <clears throat> made a video about <clears throat> cool season lawn program, showing you guys simple eight-step program you could run through season on a cool season lawn. Um, I actually got off the phone with uh, John Perry uh, the other day. We were talking about some warm season um, program, some warm season program material. So that video will definitely be coming here. I'd say hopefully. Don't don't hold me accountable because I'm terrible with deadlines. But uh, I try my best anyway. Um, I would love to get it done by next Friday. I'm sure I will. Anyway, yeah. So next Friday, warm season uh, plan. Count on it. <laughs> um. What, uh, do you, do you feel confident with warm season stuff or do you like, is that something you kind of like an area you want to educate yourself a little bit more on since obviously a lot of your experience has been with your cool season lawn? So yes and no, it's not too complicating for me because like I said, I talk to a lot of awesome people all the time, like John, who does have experience with both. And of course, due to my contact that I have with Alan and cause I, I do keep up with everybody. I try to like, I watch Alan's videos a lot and based on the stuff he's been talking about with warm season grass, I've learned a lot and just talking to John and jamming with him as well as a couple of other people like the lawn tools, right? They're good folks out there. Um, teaching me a lot about, uh, the Bermuda and the St. Augustine, Zoysia, um, you name it. So I'm, I'm learning as I go and I'm, I'm pretty excited about this video actually too, cause it's a whole nother ballpark I've never attacked. So I guess you could say I'm a little, I'm a little nervous about it, but I'm also excited about it because it's something, again, it's a ballpark. I'm just dipping my feet in sure. the sand on. Do you have any future plans to do any collabs with the lawn tools? <laughs> um, yes, I actually do have, a, I do have a video coming out, uh, pretty soon on the, on the Titan that they delivered oh, to me. Right. I shot some footage with them. Yeah. I shot some footage with them. They graciously came down, dropped it off and I will be getting that video out. Maybe when I do the review on it in the spring, because I actually got a bagger attachment for it now. So I'll be able to do some stuff with that. It's, it's going to be pretty So fun. they didn't, when they came it's and visited awesome. you at the end of last year, they weren't able to do, they weren't able to shoot an <laughs> LT turf episode there, were they? Because it was too dark. Uh, it was too dark and too cold. At that point, my lawn was just entering dormancy because, see, one of the things, this is what I tell a lot of people, is that with our weather patterns nowadays, we get like super frost, cool temperatures in October, and then we get into November, and it's like 50, 60 degrees, and it's warm, and the grass is just going into dormancy, so the grass doesn't know what the heck to do already, so at that point, I was like, you know what? Maybe maybe a summer or spring trip if they want to do that. So lawn tools, if you're watching, I, I'd be down to do an episode of that. 
I think it's fun. I'm looking forward to when they they uh, their second season starts back up. I'm I think Jordan might have said they're going to start uh, making them or posting them in uh, February. But I know uh, I don't know. I really enjoyed them because it's just a unique perspective, uh, unique unique content. Yeah. There, I I personally think their whole channel has been very unique as far as the content they make because they're just goofy. <laughs> No, I think... No, go ahead. Go ahead. You go, go ahead. ahead. So I think one of the coolest things about them as a whole is what makes them different right away is the fact that they're a duo, right? It's two dudes who pretty much take care of... I don't know. Do they have their own lawns or do they do a uh, similar lawn? I've, se- I've seen... Yeah, most- so Jordan has his own lawn, which is the primary lawn you see in his in the videos. Excuse me. And then uh, yeah. uh, Aaron, his brother, left tool... Uh, he lives right down the street from him, and uh, they ju- like that was that was one lawn they just sodded this past year. They're brothers. Yep. I never knew that. See, that's that's cool right off the bat. Just the fact that they're brothers and they work together trying to grow a brand and a YouTube channel. Like I, I admire that. That's pretty awesome. And that's something I kind of wish I had in my life because I am I am a, I have been a solo guy. Um, for everything with like with my lawn care business for the most part making these videos it's all just me so um, the fact that they have each other to jam ideas off of I think that's what that's what makes their channels well so great. if you get it uh, hopefully we have the GIE this year and hopefully they get to it both of them get hopefully, oh, hopefully they both get to attend because if they do and we get to go this year you should definitely spend some time with them because they are they're pretty good. They're a pretty good duo just to hang out with, and they're pretty funny because Aaron, Aaron, uh, <laughs> yeah. he just has a, a little bit of a, a more goofy personality than Jordan. Jordan, I don't know. They just play off of each other really well, and it's it's yeah, they complement yes. each other well. Natural brotherhood. Yeah, yeah. Well, did you know Jordan? <laughs> he's a he's an eye doctor. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah, I, I've heard him mention yeah. that. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. He he uses it in his skits, mm-hmm. which I think is pretty yep. funny. Um, well, you said you're always Thanks. a solo show. Uh, you know, show have have any have any of your sisters ever showed any interest? Oh yeah, you know I've taken my uh, my youngest of two younger sisters out. Uh, she's a workhorse. She she's an athlete. Plays uh, softball. Played basketball for a little bit. Um, that's that's actually one thing. Real quick, all three of us are different, right? Uh, you have me, who's more of the business-minded YouTuber, like entrepreneur guy. Uh, my younger sister being the uh, the sport, you know, like the athlete of the group. And my middle sister, my oldest of the youngest, she's more of like the uh, she's more of, she's she's like the life of the party. She's the one everybody likes to hang out with. That you said you, you said so your middle different. sister's the life of the party. Yeah, she's that's, she's the life of the party. That's Everyone. so interesting because my my middle brother <laughs> is the same way, right? He's uh the he's always been the very outgoing one, uh you yeah. know always always personable, and I feel like to a degree my because my so I come from three boys, uh we, you know, and my my wife comes from three, you know, she's it was her and two older sisters, and I was you know I had two older brothers, and I think even her, her middle sister was kind of more of you know, more of the life of the party kind of deal as well. I don't know. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but yeah. I've always heard that as the, the middle child always kind of being, uh, the life of the party or maybe the rebellious one or something like that. That's always what I've heard as far as the middle child. <laughs> so that's funny. Oh, exactly. Middle there's, child. nature. There's gotta 100%. be some sort of, uh, I don't know. Some, I don't know if genetics. I don't know if it'd be genetics or something else. But there's got to be something there, scientific or. No, but it, it's funny because we're all different, but we we get along great together, right? We go out to lunch. We go, I take them to the stores if they need anything. I got them, right? I think the fact that, you know, sure we we crack names. We you know what I mean. We we get on each other, but isn't that what uh, siblings yep. are supposed to do? Have a little yep. camaraderie, make fun of each other. Because if your if your brothers or sisters are complimenting you all the time, I'd I'd feel a little weirded out. I'm sorry, but that's how I'd feel. So I think it's good to have a little bit of uh, fun in there. Anyway, to go back to what we were saying, so my younger sister, from time to time, when she's got a, 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 fr- a free moment, she'll come with me. We'll do we'll trim some bushes, or if she wants to learn how to use a new mower that I have, so she can maybe come and operate with me. Um, I'll 
she's down for me to teach her how to do that. So yeah, they're That's both very. How cool. old's your youngest sister? She's so. Let's see. I'm, I'm 19. She's 15. Okay, so that she's she's and essentially the, how as old or close to your the age you were when you started YouTube. I started, yeah. So I started at. 13. Oh, okay. I didn't realize you were thirteen. I thought you were more. I thought you were like the fourteen, fifteen range or a year. Yeah, I started. I started in November of twenty fourteen. So all three of us, all three of us are two years apart. I'm nineteen, seventeen, fifteen. That's all three right of on. us. Yeah. Um, Kyle, Kyle Quant, I think I pronounced that right. He said, "Hey, Jake, you should start doing more podcasts." Yeah, I've been thinking about it. You know, my dad and I, the Silverback, we've been talking about it. So we have a segment that we do from time to time when we review tools called Chats with Silverback, where um, we have one rule. We turn the camera on and everything we say has to be within the first take. Right. <laughs> so. So, Ben, you've you've met my dad before. You know how he is um, when he's uh, <laughs> when you catch him at a time where he really doesn't want to be on camera. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's a little he's a little grump. He's a little grump, but it's all good and fun, right? We we pick on each other. It's the it's the best. So uh there was one time we recorded a segment together and <laughs> he was just not feeling it that day. And the it just so happened that the mic wasn't working and I told him, you know, sorry man, we gotta do this again. <laughs> <laughs> was he more mad or what was what was that like? Well, he wasn't I wouldn't say he was mad, but he was definitely a little frustrated. <laughs> That's funny. It, it's all good. No, and fun, I think though. that would be. A, I think that would be an interesting podcast uh, or show. You like a a father son uh, show duo duo. I think that because oh, yeah. I I think that I don't think there's anything that's. <laughs> I don't think there's anything out there that's like that right now. And I think that would be a good duo. And I think you know. Oh, there'd be a yeah. lot of ball busting too. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> We get my younger sister on the podcast. Boy, she's a spitting Im image of him. Those two bust each other for hours. I think that would be. I it's think because I remember at the GIE in 2019, we were trying to get your dad to start a uh, an Instagram channel. The yeah, Silverback Instagram <laughs> Silverback channel. Instagram I think, Instagram account. I think you, if you help, you could just give him a few like five tips. Like, Dad, do this. I think it could be a pretty big hit in the lawn care world, and who knows? It could he could break outside of that and do something funny. Maybe it could be an outlet for him. I don't know if he's interested in that. But I, I see. Here's the thing with my dad. He's not like he doesn't really need. He's sure. got plenty of outlets. It, his biggest outlet is being able to sure. spend time with his family, and that's us. But sometimes we're we're the reason he yep. needs to go to the gym. Like seriously, we we sometimes we piss him off that much. That's how we are as kids. But uh, anyway, yeah, it's all good. We get along with him. It's all good and fun. And yeah, we definitely got to start a podcast, Tim and I together. I think that would be interesting. Maybe maybe what I would do is I would take the chats with Silverbacks, make that a full thing, uh, because we do have those chats where we talk about products and all that. And maybe I'd just let the camera roll for like 40 minutes and rig up some microphones and, you know, just let it go from there. Because him and I, we <laughs> we dive into yeah, a lot. Make it. Yeah, maybe make it like a, you know, don't, don't, don't overcommit to a lot at the beginning. Maybe make it like a once a month kind of deal or something like that. I think oh, that, would yeah, be, yeah. that would be yeah, pretty unique that. and fun to do. I think that'd be cool. No, absolutely. It would be very fun. Well, we are uh, a little over an hour. So, I, man, this, this always fly by. I'm always shocked at how quickly an hour goes by on these shows. And I like to keep them around that. Sometimes we, we go a little over, but I like to be respectful of my coat. Should we, uh, should we answer some comments to close out? Like maybe nine forty. Yeah. Yeah. I, I see a lot of good questions coming. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know. I, didn't know. I, I, was, I thought I, I was getting most of them throughout the show. If you, if you see ones that I don't see, you, you talk, you talk them out. Yeah, oh, let's, Brian, let's he said, Jake, did you ever ro get ride, get rid of the quack grass in your lawn? I'm dealing with that now here in SoCal. Okay, so quack grass is very different. It's very hard to get rid of with a pesticide. So the least you could do 
is just keep mowing it like normal because when you do that, you're not going to get rid of it, but you're at least going to suppress it, right? It's one of those, it's kind of like Alan when he talks about torpedo grass. That's the torpedo grass of the north, right? It just doesn't go away. But the least you could do is just keep mowing like normal. And if you decide to go lower, like most of the folks out here who teach you how to real mow or not even real mow, maybe even take your lawn down to two and a half inches, especially if it's bluegrass, mm -hmm. it's going to get thicker and it's going to take over. And it is so going to suppress did, it. Have you been able to suppress yours very well? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. As a matter of fact, 2018 was like a mowing spree for me. I mowed my grass every two days. I wasn't real sure. mowing it, but um, I did have the Connor Ward bugging me at the time a little bit. So I was mowing every two days to suppress the problem, and it worked out pretty well. It's yeah. also fun, too. I've, uh, I've, it, it's always been good when, uh, anytime I've, like been on consistent mowing schedules like that, it just feels good because you're you're. Uh, it's almost it's like easy, and you can see things just improving and looking better as you do it. Because I've, it's I always notice a difference when I'm mowing just a little bit versus a lot off. You know, and not obviously breaking the one third rule or whatever, mm -hmm. but I can definitely see a difference when I'm I'm staying consistent with that uh, mowing. You know, every three to four days, if I can do that, uh, that can be a challenge sometimes. But I can definitely notice a difference when I start doing that. Absolutely. Uh, Bermuda Brian, cool. he asks, so Jake, are you dominating Alan's old lawn? How is it looking these days? Um. So here, here's the deal with that lawn. So we, I have not watered it over the last summer. So it did take a little bit of a beating in the heat, which is typical of cool season grass. But other than that, in the spring and fall, it was looking pretty good. You know, we were fertilizing it. Um, we were fertilizing it at least every four to six weeks. And I was using Next products on it, so it turned out pretty good. It's double dark green. Have you trademarked that yet? I have, I, I have not, but I'm afraid if I say that any more about it, somebody's going <laughs> to do it for me. <laughs> Uh, Jamie, the accountant asked best way to get rid of clumping fescue. Uh, I've always heard just using glyphosate and digging it out or digging it out. Yep. Okay. Or if you don't like glyphosate, yeah, just dig it out and yeah. put some seed there. Yeah. And if you, and, and assuming that most people, uh, Ben, I know there's some people on here that real mow, but assuming most of you guys don't. Um, if, if you don't get every nook and cranny of the grass out right away, just know that digging it out, you'll get almost at least 95% of it. And the grass that you plant there will take over and dominate whatever comes back. So you'll be good. Yeah. I'm sure I have clumping fescue. I, I have no doubt that I do. I've never really been one of those kind of people that, uh, and not saying there's anything wrong with it. Um, like to me, if it, if it looks good. And it's green. It's uniform. It looks relatively uniform. I don't really go after a lot of those, uh, you know, clumping fescue things. Because to me, I've like I said, it. I guess I don't know if I've had it like really bad to where I've noticed it, and I've like, man, I need to get rid of that. Um, oh yeah. I know. I think I've had it because I think I've seen some really thick, wide blade fescue in my yard. But I'm like, eh, I just don't feel like. I don't feel like dealing with it. It doesn't look that bad. <laughs> I don't know. I it's kind of like I have better things I need to spend my time on with three kids under four years old right now or four and under. So I can't, you know, my lawn looks good. I'm happy with how it looks. Now, kudos to those people that want to get rid of it. I'm not saying that, like I said, there's nothing wrong with getting rid of it. I've just never been, I've just never oh, been no. that, uh, gotten to that level because I guess maybe I just don't have, I don't have the time because I have a lot of other things I need to get done. <laughs> Do you, Yep. I, I could see that too, because one of the biggest things, and I will admit this over the last year, my lawn has not done as well as it usually does. And that is a hundred percent on this guy right here, because in the process of doubling down to make these videos a little bit better, I think I've definitely gotten better. I'm, I've gotten it down to a point where I can do it in less time than the videos I was making before. But in that time, learning how to master my delivery and editing, I neglected my lawn a little bit, especially when I had free time. I was going out mowing lawns for my business and doing all my other projects. I pretty much put my lawn on the back burner so it looked a little pale uh, closing out the year. But 
I'm looking to improve on that this spring. So anybody that's called me out on that, I appreciate you. And it's only going to get better from here. Uh, well, Jake, I have a question for you. For anybody that is a first-time homeowner, first-time lawn care person taking care of a lawn, um, what is the thing that you tell them like that they need to master first? Uh, what, what, what do they need to do to be the most successful, the most efficient, but also the most environmentally friendly? So the biggest thing for me that I like to teach people when it comes to the basics is I like to teach them what I call the big three, the mowing, the fertilizing and the irrigation. Make sure you get those three things right before everything else, because once you master those three things, then you have to then you're able to do less and less of the other things like spraying weed control, putting down fungicides and insecticides, because half the time those of you even have to put those down is because you're not getting the basic three down. I'm not calling anybody out, but I'm just saying as a beginner, that's what I would focus on. It's not so much, hey, I see a weed, I see a, a fungus, um, how can I attack it? Um, if you have weeds in there and you need to spray them because they're bad, yeah, go ahead and do that. But think ahead, what are you going to do to get rid of them? And for me, I recommend the big three. Make sure you're mowing frequently. Don't break that one-third rule like, like folks like Ben and I talk about here. Make sure you're fertilizing regularly, whether that's four times a year or monthly or spoon feed like we always talk about or as far as irrigation goes in the summertime if you're going to commit to it make sure you commit to it it's it's binary right you, you're either in or you're out make sure you're watering during the summer if you're going to commit to it if you're not going to commit to it just let it go that's what i would tell you yeah and i think out of those three for me the thing like i think that everybody this isn't anything you know new but i think there's a lot a lot to say about it um, is is mowing and mowing frequently. I, I really think that's one of the biggest mistakes people make, um, because like I said, I you know I don't. It doesn't matter what you're what you're doing as far as putting fertilizer down um, or watering if you're not doing that um, the best possible way. You're you're kind of just wasting your time and money in other areas of things because. You know, the mowing is, you know, you're, you're doing that the most often out of anything else. So that, oh yeah you know, the, mm -hmm. the variable that you're doing or the, yeah, the variable you're doing the most often is most likely going to be the thing that needs to be perfected the most, in my opinion. Yep. And that's mowing. Yep. Absolutely. <clears throat> Make sure you're mowing properly and consistently and you'll be good. Oh, and another thing I tell a lot of people with fertilizer, because I do see, um, it's not too big a, of a concern of mine, but um, there are often times where some people might find a bag of fertilizer and you'll just put the entire thing on your lawn, right? What I would say to you as a beginner uh, when you're picking up a fertilizer, no matter what it is, whether it's organic, synthetic, read the label. Label is law as it will answer 90% of the questions you are asking. If you do that, you'll be good to go. And another good point too that I always think is a good place to start, just like uh, Matt and I talked about it last episode is – uh, getting a good, getting a good soil test to know exactly Absolutely. what you need in your yep. soil. So you're not just going at it blind. That's right. A exactly right. So, uh, Jake, did you see any other questions? Did I miss anything? Uh, no, uh, no. Jamie just said, admit it guys. We are the weird. We are the weird that we like to mow. Most people loathe the chore would rather be golfing. My golf game sucks. My mowing is spot on. I I, I could almost go hand in hand with that. I could I like golfing <laughs> almost as much as I like mowing. I'm not super good at golf, but I there's an aspect of golf I really appreciate. Um, so I I could <laughs> almost go hand in hand. I really like golfing and and mowing the lawn. Can Absolutely. I can I tell a story? Okay, so back in the summer, I went out to visit John for a little bit because I wanted he wanted me to come out, see, see Utah in the summertime because I made a trip in the winter to do lawn fires with him. So I came out. He invited me for a couple of days. He took me, he took me to a lot of places, took me to some nice restaurants, took me golfing, top golf, met up with the whole community over there. And uh, on the last day, I golfed with him and a fellow... 
uh, innovator who's up and coming here in the lawn care industry, Jeff Stammen mm-hmm. with Turfmend. And the three of us went golfing, right? So I decided to vlog the entire thing because here I am, this like cocky kid who hasn't played golf in three years. I'm over here like, listen, I'm I'm like the I I I, I was a junior golf league. I was I was a good golfer. Uh, you name it, everything I said it. I was I was a cocky <laughs> mofo that day, just starting off the day. And after I took my first swing, all that cockiness went away, and my game was <laughs> it was bad. <clears throat> so. It was so bad to the point where John told me, Jake, you might as well stop filming. <laughs> I can totally see John saying something like that. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, man. Uh, well, I know I asked you this already, Jake, but is there is there any teasers you want to put out there for the uh, the audience before we, we start wrapping the show up? Yeah, guys, all I could say is I'm looking forward to another kick-ass season of educating you guys. There's a lot of new things that we're going to be teaching you guys um, coming up here. Like I said, we might do that hill thing, so that'll be fun. Um, and on top of that, uh, continuing on with the projects, like the big project lawn I'm, do- I'm doing, I did with Alan. Got some more stuff we're going to be doing over there. want to continue on with that, making it bigger and better. So, uh, yeah, we'll be doing some year, year number two videos over there as well on the uh, overseeding project that we did. Um, back in the spring of this year, so yeah, it's going to be a fun time. And you Wild know, ride. you and I aren't you and Hope I aren't really that far from each other, so maybe maybe we could hook up sometime, and I can help you out with one of those projects or something. I don't know. Absolutely, that would be fun. Let's do it. <clears throat> well, uh, guys, I really appreciate everyone tuning in tonight. Jake, I sincerely appreciate you coming on the show, and uh, you know, you giving us your time. Um, it was my uh, pleasure. I don't have anything else for you guys unless Jake does. Um, but I hope you guys have a great weekend. I hope this show was uh, a good way to unwind at the end of a busy work week uh, for you guys in a way to start a really good weekend. I hope your weekend is relaxing, enjoyable, and just recharges your batteries for another great week. Uh, We will be back next Friday at 8.30 p.m. with Mark from Lawn Creeps. I'm pumped about that that show. It's going to be a lot of fun. Mark (laughs) is a big – he's a character. It's going to be fun. Um, Yeah, can I just say one thing about Mark real quick? I think one of the the coolest things with Mark is every time he films a video, it seems as if he has to get it done before somebody catches him. With that low, with that low profile camera angle, that like super fish eye, yeah. like it's hidden in his hand. It's so, it's so genius. Yeah. And it's so awesome. It reminds me of old hip hop videos. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you guys it's like two thousand. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, you guys have a great weekend. We will see you next week. Thanks, everybody. A- it was so nice. I appreciate your comments as always. Have a good one, guys. Thank you, Nestor.